Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Lays Rodriguez, and today I'm going to talk to you about Terraform. Don't reinvent the modules. First, a little bit about me. I'm a senior software engineer at Pagarmi, a payment service uh, provider company that belongs to Stony Co., the biggest Brazilian company specializes in solutions for entrepreneurs. I'm part of the AWS Community Builder Program as a container specialist, and I hold a bachelor degree in information systems in the Federal Finance University. And I'm also an automation enthusiast, and Terraform led me there. You already, uh, you all probably already know this. However, to leverage one, everyone, what is Terraform? Terraform is an open source infrastructure as code software tool that provides a consistent CLI workflow to manage hundreds of cloud services. Terraform codes files, cloud APIs into declarative configuration files. But first, a disclaimer. Terraform is a layer of abstraction on the way that we use the cloud as we saw in the previous slide. And abstraction is a concept too important to be treated lightly. If you're learning Terraform and don't prioritize getting to know how Terraform and AWS works under the hood, you may have some level of headache down the road. Let's talk a bit about time to market. Time to market is the time between that we take to develop a product solution and make it available for general use. In this slide, you can see the most common roadmap of software development. And from the first to, first to the, st the first step to the last, time to marketing is critical. And here is and here and here is where we take a closer look at the step two of this roadmap, the code. This code step covers the actual code of your of your application and the infrastructure as code that your application or product will need to go live. And in order to make a basic infrastructure to run this application in AWS, in AWS, we will need pass, okay. a VPC, an elastic load balancer, or an API gateway, our RDS instance, and maybe a Redis cache. We can use Lambdas to process our business logic or run it on ECS or EKS. And let's not forget the IAM policies that we need to set up to make everything work and keep the good practices of cloud architecture in hand. And that is where Terraform help, help, help us with it. Yay, I'm getting there. <laughs> in my narrow journey in the infrastructure as code world, I have seen this too many times. We create one or more private repositories that, that contain one or more Terraform modules. And this is my, in my, <clears throat> in my, uh, let's forget that. And this is a problem because we have, we can list some problems with that. <laughs> Thank you, Jasmine. Uh, we, can, we can have a difficulty on maintaining and evolving of Terraform, for example, to keep stuck to, to keep stuck on 0 0.11 or 0 0.13 version. A repository containing all the modules on your company's GitHub, you have no idea how much I hate this. This is the example of the screenshot on the previous slide. And using Git to be modules to import the modules. That was in that black rectangle with an emoji from just play with me. What the company should be doing instead? Terraform AWS modules were created by Anton Babenko and are the entry point to extract the most of Terraform without worrying about all the underlying setup that we may need for our applications. This is the biggest repository of AWS modules available today. Why should you use those modules? Don't reinvent the wheel. As I said earlier, time to market is crucial to our work. Our work as software engineers or SREs. And we, as developers, already lose so much time in reinventing the wheel instead of contributing to the open source community solutions available. Going back a bit on abstraction. 
I'm focused on abstraction because it enables us to be faster and avoid complexity because it helps us on hiding the complexity of the cog of the machine while we just focus on making the car move. Improves maintenance. Since we delegated the complexity to others, it's easy to us to keep our code base up to date. And, the, and here I enter the benefits of using these Terraform AWS modules. The modules are public and open source. They are under Apache 2 license. The modules are implemented uh, by the good practice of the cloud architecture. The modules are actively maintained and updated. Now, as you can see on this screenshot, the last comment on the VPC module was January 24, but probably already has more because that, that's a bit old today. The models are double checked by the community and the mods have examples on how to use them. These models are very well documented. Uh, they have a, a good documentation. And you can see in the screenshot, like this one, uh, I lost my point here. And talking a bit about community, improving my point how community is strong around this organization of these modules. The first time that I have done this presentation was November 2021. And the VPC module was provisioned beyond 30 million times. When I was updating this, mod this presentation for today, the last time that I checked, this model, this model was already provisioned in, in almost 36 million times. 23 million new provisions between my first screenshot and this one. If this is not a giant approval of the use of these models, <laughs> I don't know what can be. I'm going to a demo right now. Gladly I recorded because live demos can be tricky. I will press play here and enjoy. Next, see? Yay. <laughs> In this demo, we saw how easy it is to create a VPC in AWS using the module provided by the AWS community. In about 35 lines, we have a functional VPC working and ready to use. When you are doing like vanilla Terraform, it's easy to not follow the good practices that I have mentioned before. In the VPC example, we can see that we have the declaration of two subnets, one private and one public. Let me get the pointer. However, the model is much more powerful. You can see in this example where we have six subnets, each one with its purpose to isolate the resources in our VPC. We can pass names to, for us, we can pass custom names for our subnets and even manage the creation of resources that are not direct, directly connected with a VPC like a subnet group, like a database subnet group. 
The VPC module also provides another submodule to configure VPC endpoints. In this example, we can see that we are configuring our an S3, a DynamoDB, and a SSM endpoints. A VPC endpoint allows you to connect directly to AWS services without going to the internet for it. Using this resource can save you some money on your budget, and I recommend that you study this one later. By now, you should be wondering when, when it would be the case that you should write a module. And the answer for these is corner cases. Using existing modules validated by the community give you a heads up on your development process. It allows you and your team to deliver faster, achieving the time to market expected for the product, but you may not find what you need on the Terraform registry. In my case, I felt the need to create a module to manage the creation of AWS users related to the GitHub Actions pipelines. Almost on a daily basis, we are creating infrastructure for new applications and where we need to create specific users to handle the deployments. So this model, model helps me achieve that. I pass the arms of the resources that I require and I get back a user with the permissions that it needs to deploy or code to the related AWS service. I may finish this talk like in five minutes, but that's okay. <laughs> A bit of extra content. Okay. First, an advice. The advice that I can give you to you all today you can have a unique repository where you can, man, can store many modules for Terraform. However, this will be a repository for your applications, infrastructure as code, where you can manage the life cycle of the application, application using Atlantis. For, uh, for you don't, that don't know Atlantis, uh, is a, uh, Atlantis is an automation that helps you to deploy Terraform to your chosen code but via pull requests. So we use this in the component that I work for. It is amazing. And we have like one repository for all the infrastructure of his code of all, all of our applications. So we, co we concentrate that, but we use Terraform AWS models behind it. And if you choose the path of storing your modules in a repository, as always, document everything. And nothing is more helping, helpful has to automate that using a Git hook made for it. This pre-commit pre Terraform hook was created, was created by the same author of Terraform AWS modules, Anton Babenko. Thanks to Anton, we can validate in our machine a lot of Terraform configuration and keep the documentation up to date before pushing it to the repository. And I love pre comment like I add it in all my applications. It's just amazing how that works. And the end. <laughs> Thank you all for watching me. Thanks to the HashCorp team for this remarkable opportunity to share knowledge to this fantastic audience. You can find me on LinkedIn and Twitter, and I look forward to hearing your feedback about this presentation. You can find these slides on my LinkedIn where you can also find the reference that I used for this talk. Thank you all, and I hope to see you all soon.